tournaments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, let's let's, let's, let's get Smash into Brothers. This. Yeah, Smash Brothers. All right, guys. <laughs> and if you, if you guys are had missed the pre-show, if you guys didn't watch the pre-show, this is Di Radio. This is where I. I mean, I've already read the script a dozen times, so now I can just simply say it without looking at it. I apologize for looking at it, but anyways, this is Di Radio. This is the talk show where I interview some of the most influential people in the Smash community, and this right here, man, is one of the coaches that I want you guys all to know about because he's super sick. He does it like every coach, like I said before in the pre-show, every coach does it their own way, and Ramses does it in such a way where I'm happy I discovered him and I'm happy everybody talked to me about him and talk, we got into it in the pre-show here, uh, which you guys can get it exclusively on some platform that I put it on. I don't remember what I put it on because I'm very, very <laughs> still trying to figure that out. Anyways, read the description, right? <laughs> yeah, read the description. Ramses, how are you today? I'm doing extremely well. Thank you. Thank you. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to be part of the show today. Honestly, uh, when we said six o'clock, a huge part of my mind was six o'clock American time. And then I was like, wait a minute. No, that's central, central European standard time. Yep. Oh, I got to be up at nine. And then uh, there I am playing Hearthstone, <laughs> at, playing Hearthstone at two in the morning, trying to make no. it. No. <laughs> just like, yeah, I got to be up at nine in the morning. Uh I'm just stumbling now and then. I mean, there's mo modern problems require modern solutions. So you oh. just you just grab a, a extra caffeinated coffee and then you're you're good to go, right? Definitely. I actually, it's funny. I've never been a coffee person. I never. Oh, okay. Regretfully, so I wish I got into coffee. I'm more of a tea person, but uh, they didn't sponsor the show. None of it. I'm just speaking from my experience because I said, hey, I want to try this product out, and somebody gave me like a like a like a sixty percent off coupon. Uh, I had G Fuel this morning. I've been drinking okay. G Fuel. They're not sponsoring the show. I'm just telling you, they're not paying you. No one, no one's giving me. This is my personal testament. I actually think it really works because every time I drink it, I'm I wake up. And it holds in yourself. You guys, just putting that out there. It's not about G Fuel. It's not about me. It's about it's about my friend here, Ramses. Ramses, for the I know who you are. Well, I'm glad I know who you are actually. <laughs> but for but for those who don't know, go ahead and tell me your elevator pitch. Right, so I'm Ramses. That's my actual name. Um, I've been in the Smash scene for about 10 years now, um, which is kind of a lie because I took a little bit of a break, but I've been around since 2009. Uh, back in the Brawl days, I've competed in Melee, I've competed in Brawl and Smash 4, and now I compete in Ultimate as well. Um, ever since back in the Brawl days, I've been very invested in like the theoretical side of Smash, of competitive games in general. I have a very rich competitive background with multiple competitive games. Um, but Smash is my one and only love at the end of the day. Uh, so yeah, I invest a lot in like the theoretical side and knowledge side back then. And after my break, which was for university, um, I actually came back to Smash with some newfound knowledge because I graduated in game development. Specifically, uh, I graduated with a specialization in combat system design, which is a very fancy way of saying I research fighting games. <laughs> so I did a lot of theoretical research in my university with uh, the help of my mentors. Uh, and based on that knowledge, I built a basically a theoretical such conceptual framework through which you can better understand competitive games in general, but especially fighting games, and especially, especially Smash. So that's what I've been working on spreading. Um, it's very... Um, I would say, whereas the usual coaching is very much focused on uh, what are you doing wrong, how can you play interactions better, you know, um, DI that's that, that's going wrong, stuff like that. I focus a lot on like the strategy. So rather than talking about this is wrong, you should do this, I try to explain what happened, why it happened. Uh, I try to discover why you thought what you were going to do was the right thing. And then we talk about why that's wrong and what you should think instead. And by altering the way you think, I try to help my players actually improve, um, not just by putting band-aids on issues, but by actually like solving the underlying problem at hand. Right. So that's basically what I do. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no, that's later, the best yeah. way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a long description. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's no, 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 no. Like I said, we talked about it. Cool. The, it's about, yeah, exactly. The floor is yours. So recently, recently, uh, I've, I've actually been coaching for a long time as well. Mm -hmm. So back in the brawl days, not really. I try to focus on my own play. But ever since Smash Four, I've been coaching um, all of my friends, who are basically like all the Dutch top players, as well as some of the uh, European top players. Um, I've worked with like Space, S One, uh, even Mr. R, a little bit of Lutini as well. Um, 
And after a while, I decided, well, I have so much knowledge. And um, I mean, not to toot my own horn, I feel like I view the game in a different way than the average coach. And I go a little bit deeper than that. Uh, so I decided to see if there was any interest in that. So I started up my new Twitter account, which is uh, Ramses underscore esports. And from there, a Twitch as well, on which I stream. Um, and yeah, that's basically the platform that I use to try to share my knowledge with the community. I want to say for sure that was the coolest thing that I saw, and I've gone into it before. Every I, I appreciate every coach. I really do. Um, yeah. Korean, getting to work with him so closely, being good friends with him, you know, practically going, practically going to dinner with this guy like every other weekend, uh, you know, and him going through the aspects of coaching or him just going through, you know, what's on his mind in general was really interesting. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to compare you anybody just for the record for anybody who's going to get into it. I'm not comparing anybody. I think, like I said, all coaches are really great. Definitely take coaching advice. But you, I that was the one thing that I have to say. And maybe I'm going a little bit off topic here. But the, the one thing I have to say was this guy, because I watched one of your Twitch streams. And, and I believe you were coaching at Isabel. I believe you were coaching at Isabel. And her, right, yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, the way that... Because I'm, I'm learning more into my commentary, more into speaking as I started to do this podcast. Um, which, by the way, you're lucky episode number six. I broke the sixth episode. Really, really happy. This Let's pers- go. Personal story about that later. But okay, I'm. I was like, this guy is explaining it to me and writing it down and getting into bullet points in a manner that I don't get to see Korean what he does in the background, how he does his thing, how he does his thing, how Izzo does his thing, how he does his thing. Or how every coach has their own thing. But you streaming it and you going through it and explaining it, I was like, this guy's got to have a degree in like sociology, <laughs> uh, you know, the public speaking. What, what, he's got to have some kind of degree. So when you tell me that you have a degree in game design and specifically for, you know, the fancy word of fighting games, it makes me go, dude, okay, now even I can try to probably get a degree in that. Because <laughs> not only are you certified in terms of school and education, but you're able to demonstrate that, explain it, and go through the process of it live on the stream for a person to understand. I don't mean Isabel, but when you finally got into it, how why he picked those options, how those options work. And you even went so intricate as far as to go as to the in-depth process of character design. I was just, which is something I usually try to, if you guys listen to me commentary, I try to do that a little bit. But you went okay. into it that I was just like, God, I feel so stupid. <laughs> like, no, don't, don't, dude. But, but dude, I, the, the smartest, the smartest thing in the world mm-hmm. is when you admit that you didn't know something, mm-hmm. because that opens your mind, and then you can let more information flow in, right? So that's not stupid at all. I think the fact that you're listening well enough to understand what I'm talking about that's mm-hmm. that already says a lot, in my opinion. Yeah, because a lot of people listen, but they don't understand right right um there's a there's a difference between listening and understanding what's going on so i, th- I think it actually it, i'm kind of limiting my own audience in a way um which i no offense to anyone of course if you don't like my work then you don't like it but uh i try to go like in depth in a way that forces people to listen if they want to keep up right and that does mean that you need to pay well i don't want to say close but you need to play pay, pay attention to what i'm saying to get through so it's not like a youtube video or a twitch stream that you keep on in the background because then you kind of lose track of what's going on um but yeah well thank you for the support thank you for no no, no, no. And, and definitely i i enjoyed it i enjoyed it it was a learning experience even like i tell people as somebody who i mean unfortunately 2020 is the way that it is trust me if it were up to me i would find magical ways to make magical money and fly ramses out here and do a show in person but fortunate unfortunately 2020 is the way it is like i said and I had plans to, you know, throw my highlight reels at people and take try to take my commentary into separate places, you know, and try to grow and things happened and, you know, here I am, but I decided to make light of it. So watching your stream definitely was an educational experience for me, especially as somebody who does commentary. Uh, I talked about this with Izzah, like when I first started, like looking at his art of Smash was one of those things that helped me understand the game of this is the character neutral, this is the character this, this is, you know, yeah. this is this is 30 minute primer or 20 minute primer how to play the character. If you want to learn more, you can come back and there's more in-depth combos that you, he gets to show you. Then watching your stream was very much of like, I was playing Hearthstone in the background and like you said, I had I actually stopped playing 
And I was like, no, I actually need to give this my undivided attention because I'm hearing things that I wouldn't normally hear from, from myself or see or take in that this requires my attention. And then I'm glad I tuned in. Um, but, you know, we can, we can go into, you know, more of your, your brand and all that. And then also shout out to your Twitter game because that's something that I also really enjoy going back into content. I think it's really cool that you you tweet out your your thought processes and your knowledge is about you know getting into coaching the intricacies of the game and what to think about and then you go ahead and like hey look here's my here's the base quote unquote the elevator pitch you guys want to read the rest yeah here's two images of what i wrote below and then that's that's free information for anybody to just follow and get into and then definitely i think it's ramsey underscore esports also on twitter right right yeah yeah, yeah. Ramses underscore esports everywhere. It's YouTube uh, dot com slash user slash Ramses underscore esports. Twitch, mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 universal. Yeah, so easy and enough. Like I say, it was, I was like, dude, this guy is just getting on point. But as I said, as I talk about you, I really I want to go ahead and talk about your beginnings. You know, talk about a little bit about humble beginnings. How did you start? <laughs> um, who, like I said, who watched the Game Boy? Who bought, oh, who bought you the game, the uh, GameCube? You know, what was it like growing up? And then what kind of, because you said you took a break, right? And I kind of want to get into like, you know, how did you how did you choose to take a break within that four years study game design and then be able to apply that? So let's go in the beginning, man. How did, what, what's it, what was it like for you? What was Young oh, Ramses like? Young Ramses was game addicted, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it, it started from the get-go. I So I grew up with both of my parents being gamers. Mm -hmm. So... My mom awesome. and my dad has been playing video games since the NES. Um, and I think I was two years old when I played my first video game because uh, that was basically the age at which you can do that kind of stuff, right? Um, so I started off playing a lot of NES games um, with, you know, the support from both my mom and my dad. And um, kind of had an average average life as a kid, I would say. Um, you know, an intro introvert kid. You go to school, you don't really like school. You go home, play video games, maybe play outside if you're a little bit younger, you know, uh, save, save old stuff. Uh, I would play, I, I would get introduced to Smash with Melee, um, where I would play with my, my sisters often. So I have a younger sister and an older sister. Uh, and we would play Melee just a lot. Uh, mostly Pokemon Stadium only with Pokeballs on. Um, <laughs> that was my favorite I, too. That, yeah, dude. Uh, I'm glad I'm not the only one. So as soon as I discovered the internet, I discovered that I wasn't the only person who played Pokemon Stadium with Pokeballs only. Um, but yeah, I also had a best friend back then, uh, Chair. Any of the Brawl veterans might recognize the name. He was a very, uh, very strong Brawl player back in um, back in those days. And we used to play World of Warcraft. Um, we actually qualified for the World of Warcraft European Championships, uh, the Arena Championships, back when it, I think it was like the first iteration. So they set up like servers in which you can uh, create characters for free, get all the best gear for free, and then just start climbing to kind of even out the the playing playing field, right? Uh, so we did that. We got to like number two, I think. Then we got invited. We were both too young. So in the Netherlands, competitive gaming counts as gambling. So you have to be uh, 18, 18 and older to gamble. So we couldn't do that. So that was a shame. And that kind of destroyed both of our motivations for World of Warcraft. So we switched to something new, and then he discovered Brawl, uh, and then we got into the game. Sucked a lot, and we both were looking for like a competitive scene for that as well. You know, coming off to, like the World of Warcraft hot streak, uh, playing broken meta compositions, uh, just lots of fun, and then you know going to to Brawl. That that competitive drive was still there. So uh, we went to uh, Kak, who was the best European game and watch back in Brawl. Lots of brawl names. Uh, I'm sure most of the people don't know, but um, yeah. And basically, what happened to us is what happened to everyone. Uh, we got destroyed. We came there feeling we were hot shit, um, and then just got destroyed. So that was my first experience with Smash. And afterwards, we would grind a lot. So talking about like the brawl scene in the Netherlands, we would have one tournament every half year. Uh, that's basically how it was. We had like. 60 people that regularly came, but they came to every tournament because there was so little. So a lot of the brawl days were spent practicing with your local, uh, you know, local friends. Uh, and this was like my training group. So we had Mr. R eventually join in as well. Uh, when I discovered that Mr. R lives five minutes away from me. So um, I would regularly train with Mr. R, with Kak, with uh, Chair, my friend. 
And then I think at my first tournament, I think this was before I started pr practicing with Mr. R still, but yeah, at my first tournament, uh, I drowned in pools. And then my second tournament, it was a European major, and I got ninth or 13th. I think it was ninth. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, so uh, basically I played a very campy Falco, and I don't know if, like, the stereotype that Europe is very aggressive has de definitely has a core of truth to it, um, <laughs> and that really, really helped me get to that early strong performance. So that's kind of where the drive began. I would say for the rest of Raul's lifetime, my accomplishments were a little bit, um, you know, mediocre. I, I, was, I was not quite power ranked, but I was just, you know, just like the, the tier below that. Which was still respectable because the Netherlands has always been a very strong country in Smash. Um, and yeah, then Brawl kind of became a little bit too boring and I got the university offer. So off I went to university and that's when I started with my Smash break. Um, while I was at uni, I studied the fighting game uh, design stuff. Spent a lot of time on that. Basically, so the university I went to, um, it's a top 10 ranked game development university in the world. Oh, okay, wow. It, it used to be top 5, I don't know if it's still that, but top 10, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's, it, it used to be called the NHTP, now it's called like the Breda University of Applied Sciences. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a much better name. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, actually. Yeah, so the old, it's, it used to be like, a, they used to only do like hotel schooling stuff, now they do game development, and they mm -hmm. actually, it, it's a long story. Basically, really good school, but a lot of pressure to perform. Um, my, my club, I think... In my year, there were about 1,500 applications, um, and about 60 people uh, made it. And out of those, about seven graduated. So I'm one of the seven people who graduated. Ah, um, man, that's a number that, like, I, I'm, I'm clapping for you, but also I'm like, damn, that's a, that's a number. I'm sorry. That, <laughs> yeah, that's so it actually, so that's kind of why um, what what gave me a lot of the discipline that i'm using now to create mm -hmm. my content because i wasn't very disciplined before like I, I was a typical like introverted gifted person who was like yo you're not you're not grasping your full potential right you mm -hmm. could do so much more and i just didn't care but then the game development uh, uh stuff came and it was like 60 hours a week at least and uh you know no no free time spend your time at school you know make sure you sleep enough so that you can listen in class uh, I had to learn like a new code language every every block. A lot of just love lots of work. Um, but on the other hand, they prepare you for the industry very well. So what they did a lot as well is teach you a lot of public speaking. So like pitching your idea, how to talk to an audience, how to keep the audience engaged, stuff like that. So that kind of formed my basis together with my theoretical knowledge for my commentary career. Um, but we can get into that more later. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time at school and then. Just as I was about to graduate, I got into Smash again, and I almost failed my graduation <laughs> uh, because I spent too much time playing Smash. But I made it with like a, barely a pass. I was like one point off of failing, but I made it. Hey, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's back. That's when I got back in Smash Four. So that's kind of where the current arc begins. That's, and I'm gonna go ahead and speak from my personal experience because. Definitely, this is funny for me. I actually tell people, when you graduate, and this is a story that all my family members have told me, when you graduate, the diploma doesn't say what your average was, thank God. So yeah. <laughs> my uncle used to tell me, when you gra when you finally graduate, and I told this to everybody, it doesn't say, oh, C average student, congratulations for graduating. No, it just says <laughs> you graduated, bro. So I tell people, if you, if you made it, if you got that diploma and you're out there at the window... You did it, bro. He does not say True. Your, your, your GPA that's, or anything. That's legitimately all you need. That's all yeah. you need. So that's what I tell people. So hats off to you for like being like, oh, shoot, <laughs> I made it. But yeah, you, like I said, this is the top point. Um, talk to me a little bit about... Well, before we get into that, I actually always laugh about because some people smash is every... It's either your first love or your first... Or your first, uh, your first introduction for a lot of people. I actually tell people, mm -hmm. Smash is the game that you can say you quit, but you have never really quit. It's always yeah. something that is in the background of your mind. You will end up playing it once or twice. It is the game that you touch. I think so much more than, and I apologize. I'm not. I'm not, I not. I haven't done any statistical knowledge. You know, I haven't just looked at it. But <laughs> disclaimers, disclaimers. Yeah, just yeah. disclaimers. But just from my experience, from what I've heard a lot of people talk about. There are, I mean, 
Smash is even outsold. I think it was Street Fighter that was one, you know, one of the greatest selling games of all time in terms of fighting games. And I tell people, so many people play that play Smash. So many people have played it. Either they continue to choose to continue into a competitive aspect is up to them. Some people go off to play Street Fighter. I mean, you look at the Kill Sage. He started off playing yeah. Smash, and then now look at him, dude. One of, one of the greatest, you know, he he's he plays. He's a really great Skullgirls player. Um, Skullgirls, but <laughs> he's a really great Skullgirls player. It's really, a G Fuel, dude. Yeah, it's probably G Fuel. <laughs> I, I love it. I love G Fuel. It tastes great. And it keeps gives me energy when I need it the most. But uh, he's a really great Skullgirls player. Really great Dragon Ball Fighters player. Yeah. But he started from Brawl. So I tell people, like, it's, it's a game that everybody plays. And everybody, it's kind of like your first love. And you kind of go back to it one at one point or another. Yeah. So I totally understand what you're talking about. But going back to it, tell me what it's like to just... And it's because I'm curious to know... And for the audience out there, I hope you guys are also get to know a little bit too, because this leans a lot into your coaching and your career as, as a commentator and a coaching. Okay. Tell me a lot about, and talk to me about it too, especially. What's it like to study within that field, but also choose that field as your degree of study? You know, you talked about how, was it your first choice? You know, did you did you decide like, hey, you know, I'm a gamer already. Why would I study it? Or were you like, it's, you know, it, go it, ahead. it's hard. It's hard because I, um, let me think. Um, so when the time came to graduate uh, high school, um, I remember thinking, well, I've been wanting to make games for all my life. I was the kid who would doodle uh, level designs in class, who would make games just for the sake of it. I made, I made games in Game Maker before I even you know, started um, with my education, stuff like that. Um, but I figured, you know, it's making games. It's it's a hobby. It's not a job. But then a friend of mine who was also in the Smash scene, who was at the University of Applied Science, he told me about this this program. And I think, like, I instantly got... I remember this day very clearly because as soon as he to told me about it, I got, like, the butterflies in my stomach feeling. Like, exactly that, which is insane because I... I I legitimately, until that point, I've never had that before. Um, and that point, I knew I just have to try to get this, uh, to get this degree, to get this diploma. And then my mom was like, "Yeah, but I mean, I've done some research, and I know they got a lot of applications, and om almost nobody gets accepted." Um, but I went for it. I spent my entire summer uh, vacation creating a a. Um, so they have like an uh, how do you call it? An assignment for people to complete when they when they apply, and then the best assignment, you know, you get you get accepted based on how good your assignment is. Uh, and I, my assignment was so good that I didn't need to do an interview. So they invited me directly, um, and that's kind of where it started, right? But here's the kicker: I always wanted to make games, but I didn't know how it was to make games. Mm -hmm. um, so I spent a lot of time at school just working on learning how to make games. Um, and because, like I mentioned before, it's such a, it's such a time sink. Like you, you spend all your time, you basically dedicate your life to getting this degree, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't have time to stop and think. Okay, so but what am I really doing, right? And then, around the time where I started back with playing Smash, just before that, I did have a pause. I was done with my internship. I had to wait a month before we started with my graduation project, which was the fighting game uh, development. And I just paused and I thought, well, am I, am I actually enjoying this? Am I actually having fun, right? And I think that was the turning point for me. So um, at that point, I decided, you know, I, I do like making games. I do like making games, but I don't like everything about making games. Do I like it enough to dedicate my life to making games? Only if I do the things that I like about it. So the combat system design, mechanics design, that kind of stuff. So my approach to life kind of shifted at that point. So I decided to graduate. Of course, I need to graduate. And then with that diploma, I would secure a job, but I would find something that would, you know, fill that hole, that passion that I could really delve into. And that became Smash. It kind of came back into my life because a friend of mine who I haven't, hadn't spoken in years at that point was playing League of Legends. Back then I was also getting into, or well getting into, I was already like high diamonds. I was all also into League of Legends. Um, and he was like, yeah, I'm playing Smash 4 since you know it just released on the Wii U. 
And that's kind of how I got introduced back into the game. And that was kind of what filled that passion. And I mean, it shows because now I'm a competitor and a commentator and a coach and, you know, it just content creator as well. Uh, so yeah, that's just kind of what I delved into. Yeah. I think that's when I think about how that plays off for you. I did. I, I'm within the same boat. I tell my people, am I having fun with this? Is, yeah. is this really all? I mean, there was a tweet and you know, I have to reference it because it, it was a tweet that I had. I never replied to, but I just want to say for the record, I understand that point of view. There was a tweet that riddles made and it went super viral about like working nine to five and that's your life. And coincidentally, I understand where that tweet is coming from growing up as a kid. And like I said, being, I wasn't much of an introvert. I was kind of a little bit of, I was a struggling introvert <laughs> because I wanted to stay home and play video games, but I also love going outside. <laughs> um, I love the struggle. I, yeah, I actually tell people Legend of Zelda was a game that I loved so much that when I was a kid, I would play pretend with all my friends that we were all playing Legend of Zelda in real life. But I I understood what Riddles was talking about working that nine to five. It, it doesn't feel like a fun life, you know that that desk job, that cubby job. It it's not fun. It wasn't. I mean, I you know I watched my mother work it, and and it wasn't fun at all. So I totally understand where he's coming from. But for you you kind of were able to, I mean, you were studying in that field and then you turned the, well, what is a degree into a passion in which some people, they rarely get the chance to do that or yeah. have, have a way to do that. And what I want to get into is when did you know you wanted to be part of that, that two C within yourself? And when I say two C's, I'm talking about commentating and coaching. When did you start taking your, your gameplay into I want to commentate or I want to coach and and in this case what came first it's so weird because it kind of it kind of just happened I feel like so like I said before I have a very strong like theoretical basis off of which I base my gameplay so I'm a comp or right now I don't really know because we're kind of in lockdown and I'm focusing on all of my coaching brand right uh, but I've always been a player first a competitor first um, and I built my competition, like like my my player skill, on my theoretical knowledge. And I, okay, so this is gonna sound weird, but I don't know anyone who does this. There's literally like I could ask Mr. R, why do you do that? And it's like it's just the optimal option. No, I want to know. I want to know what, like, how does this concept? Because so, okay, this might be a little bit of a tangent, but no, I no, think no, it's no. very. The, the floor is yours, my friend. The floor okay. is yours, please. So I I think a lot of people think in terms of concepts and perspectives, right? So when you try to get better, you you start from your own perspective. And then as you improve, you gain more perspectives and you get to view the issues from more angles, right? And that becomes your perspective. So when something happens and I don't understand why it happens, it's because the other person has a different perspective than me. And there is value in seeing their perspective, right? And I think what I base my play off is collecting as many of these perspectives as possible and actually spending time creating a system that encompasses, includes all of them, right? So it, 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 it's like you often hear people say, well, he sees it this way and I see it this way. So our perspectives just don't align. Like the way we see things just doesn't, I don't think that exists. I think there is a way to, you know, bring all of these perspectives together and to decide, okay, so this is the way to approach it. So this is the, the right way, the correct way. And that's basically uh, what I try to apply to my own gameplay. And then for commentary, which is the first thing that happened, um, it just happened naturally to me. So like I mentioned for my education, I got a lot of uh, classes in terms of like public speaking, how to engage an audience, you know, how to tell a story, stuff like that. It's very important as a game developer because you'll be pitching and discussing ideas constantly, right? So being good with words, even as a Dutch person, which I am, right? Um, it's, it's, it's key. So I could just use that basis plus my theoretical knowledge. And, you know, my skills as a com commentator just kind of started from a, not to toot my own horn, a pretty high level in terms of like, um, everything except for like cooperation with my co-commentator, which is something that, you know, that kind of builds up over time, right? Yeah. It's a two-player game, and that's pretty pretty hard to to uh, get a hang of at the beginning. 
but yeah, so that's kind of like my beginnings with coaching. And then people, as I got better and better at Smash 4, because that happened relatively quickly, um, people would come to me for advice because they know me back from Brawl. I would spend a lot of time on like the theory, the knowledge, stuff like that. So people would come to me and ask me, like, I'm struggling with this. What am I supposed to do? And by explaining my um, framework to them, I also have a, a sort of like mirror so they can show me what I'm telling them, and then they can reflect back to me my mistakes, right? The holes in my theory. And through just doing that time and time again, I started realizing a lot of people actually struggle with very similar things, right? So um, this was actually inspired partially by Healthy Gamer GG. I don't know if you know them. They're like a uh, psychiatrist that does a lot okay. of like uh, streaming. And he said the exact same thing that I'm saying to you now. He said, I'm giving people help, and I'm noticing that Every, so, every few sessions, it's just the same problem with the same solutions. So that's when I figured, you know, I could help a lot of people by sharing this, this structure, this knowledge that I have built up. Um, so yeah, I think competitor first, then commentator, and then finally, especially now, the coach is, uh, <laughs> is coming up, right? Yeah, I originally said two C's, but it's, yeah, it's three C's. Competitor, competitor. It's three C's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm realizing that right now. Is this is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I actually tell people that's kind of like, well, I'm not, I'm not a coach, but I coach myself in this case, and I, and then I do have that. I think everybody has those three, those three C's within themselves yes, as a player. Yes. Everyone does, even if you're not on the mic, even if you're not, you know, a coach, you do have those within yourself because you have somebody who's commentating yourself. When you watch yourself play, after you take a loss, and then you when also you review a VOD. Exactly. Yeah. When you review yeah. a VOD. And then you do have that coach, right? When you're going through the process of trying to improve yourself, seeing where you fail, right? Asking yourself these questions. Right. And then of course that's, you are That's actually exactly what I think. And you know, so I'm sorry to interrupt. Did you want no, to No, 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 go, 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 okay. go. Cool, 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 cool. So this is okay, so I have a video uh, in which I explain what I think the merits of coaching are. And this is one of the things that kind of comes up, in my opinion. Um, Wait, really is... quick, YouTube, YouTube, it's on your YouTube, right? Yeah, it's on my YouTube. I'll, on make sure, YouTube. I'll make sure I'll drop the link on that. All right, cool, thank you, thank you. Um, so when you try to be an astrophysicist, you go to university and you get educated. You go to university, you read books, you talk with your mentors, you study, and then your skills improve. And eventually you're at a level where you understand everything conceptually, and then you can use that and build upon that. That's how you learn efficiently. In the Smash scene, everyone just starts doing. And I don't think that's a good way to learn. So that's why I think coaching is important. And like you mentioned, everyone is their own coach, but are you, you know, a coach needs knowledge of the subject and have you spent enough time understanding the concepts before trying to apply them, right? And that's why you go to university because you can read a book, just like you can read an article online on whatever, um, even though I, I will say, I think generally the content for Smash is pretty surface level. Um, but yeah, you can read a book, but if you don't understand anything or if you don't know how to apply it, and worst case scenario, you don't even know that you don't know how to apply it, which makes sense if you think about it, right? You can learn about a concept and you can think that you're applying it correctly, but there might be so many more ways that it can be applied, right? When you're studying to become good at something, there's a mentor who helps you in this process because they, they've already done it. They already have that conceptual knowledge. Um, and I think for that reason, a lot of Smash players kind of get stuck in like the mid-level because they don't have the conceptual knowledge and there's nowhere to get it from. Because the only ones who have it are, you know, the players who've already spent a lot of time, like a lot of time trying to gain it. Um, or you have to go through it yourself, right? So either you get it or you, you go through it yourself. And a coach is basically the, someone who's good at taking those concepts and explaining them in a way that fits your specific situation. Just like a teacher, just like a mentor. Um, and I think it's just so, like, culturally, I don't know how it is in the U.S., but I know, like, I, I've, I've uh, played chess, right? So I join a chess club, and there's a chess teacher, and he's a mentor. And when I play games, he looks at my games, he tells me what I'm doing wrong, 
And then when he sees that I don't understand a concept, he picks me aside and he explains the concept to me. So that's how I got taught chess. And it's so weird to me that that's like normal. Uh, and the same goes for like soccer or football, whatever you want to call it. It's like you play a game, your coach looks at you, they're like, you're lacking in these areas. This is how you solve it. There you go, right? And then you start improving it. Um, it's so weird that this is the standard for every sport, but not esports. And I mean, I, I get why, because esports is so accessible, right? Anyone can start up his, his Switch or PC and get started with a sport. You don't need a coach. But if you want to break into that high level, like every top sports player has a coach. Why? Because that's how you, that's how you get good. That's the shortcut. People ask me, like, or, well, they don't ask me, but people ask on the internet a lot of like, how do I get good? Or what's the easiest way to improve? Well, it's when someone tells you what your, you know, what the concepts, underlying concepts are. Um, so yeah, I think that's like a very important or like a very important aspect of the coaching climate is that it's not seen as normal or as a normal way to improve. When in my opinion, looking at like the uh, similarities to normal sports, it should be right i i agree i actually want to say 110 percent. i've been using 110 percent as a word a little bit too long but <laughs> i i agree so much because right now i'm in i'm just a little bit about myself so to get into this yeah i'm cool. i'm learning to play valorant i got that guy I, I was one of the few who were actually lucky to get into the beta without having to watch twitch uh because of a friend and I got into the beta. I didn't have to wait, wait up for a drop. I already said that. But, and I sucked. I did horrible. I had a horrible experience. I had never played CSGO. So the minute I'm playing game one, I'm playing with a bunch of CSGO pros and a bunch of Twitch streamers. <laughs> yes, I was one of... Uh, you probably saw me get clipped by Shroud on his stream. That, I'm probably one of those guys. Did that hurt? Yes. And then I told my friend, I hate this game. That's it. But then I went yeah. back. And then I said, I want to play this because it's hard. Because I always walk, me personally, I walk away from things that are hard. I always want the easy route. So I said, I'm going to learn this because it's hard. But when I started to get into it and play with my friends, and, and shout outs to my friend Andrew, because he's really helped me out a lot. He has kind of been like a coach to me. He has taught me a lot about game sense, about correcting your accuracy, watching VODs, how things work in the game, how to question myself, my moves, my actions. I'm sorry I'm not like, you know, immortal or radiant at the, you know, at the time of this recording, but I have felt that I understand this game more than when I played day one in beta than I would have playing by myself. And I think a lot of it sometimes, and what, what kind of drove me to finally ask Andrew for help was I got rid of my pride. A lot of it was pride. Mm. A lot of it was like, no, I can do this by myself. Some of the greatest gamers, you know, they all did it by themselves. It by themselves, yeah. Exactly. And I want to be like that too. But when I look at it, and I told, told myself, you know what I'm having right now that's holding me back is pride. And I think a lot of players, and you explained it so well that I'm happy you explained it why people get stuck at the mid-level, maybe why some people don't go up in the PR, right? Uh, which, spoilers, I do and don't think you should care about the PR. Um, Same, yeah. And they get stuck for those reasons, you know? And, and, yeah. and I just tell people sometimes I do feel like Put your pride down and actually get a coach. And this is the norm, like you said, in every sport. Kobe had a coach. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Michael Jordan, he had a coach. How do you think they got to that level? It's because then you have an outside source telling them, this is how you do it. This is how you improve, right? And go and because yeah. they've already done that, they've been there before you. And in your case, you've had the education. You've had this 60 hours you know like spent spent in school and learning about all these kinds of stuff and, and getting yeah. into it i think i think you explained it very well it's like the key word is understanding right you said I'm, I'm starting to understand this game so much more and that's just how it is it's, you cannot improve that which you don't understand right the first step to uh, solving a problem is understanding it that's just what it is is that when you when you understand the problem you can solve the cause instead of trying to fix the uh, symptoms. That's what I try to say. It's like I try to solve causes. I don't fix symptoms. 
That's when I sold the calls, the, the symptoms just fix themselves, right? That's a great. You should put that on your card. <laughs> I don't sell followers. I saw my, my my not not yet existent card. I will, yeah. I will consider it though. I I, I solve I solve causes. That's really good. That's actually really good. I like that a lot. Um, did did we? I've just been enjoying. Like I'm, I'm not fangirling, but I'm definitely enjoying hearing you talk. As someone um, been watching your content, I'm I'm so sorry though because like I know I have a tendency to be like very dominant. No, 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 no. You're like I said, dude. The show right, floor cool. is yours. This is your E3 presentation, man. This is your my TED E3. Talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is your E3. This is your TED talk. I want the people to get to hear you because you know. I just, I just find you so amazing. But not only that, like I said, Thank you. for those who don't know you in the U.S., which I feel people should, you know. But did, did we, did we talk about? Sorry, because I've been like I've been so in, into listening <laughs> to. Did we talk about how we talked about how you got into commentary and coaching, right? Yeah, yeah. So we went through that. So let's go ahead and bring it around here. I'm curious to know when did you. And and it happens a lot too. A lot of. A lot of people's success is in their students, you know, that, that shows mm -hmm. off their success. I look at, you know, getting getting to know you and through your content first before today, actually. A lot of me seeing your success was like, man, this guy is, he has so many students and I see a lot of them successful. I, that's how I get to find out about, you know, like I, I miss Mr. R spoke about you and all these other players spoke about, you know, I was like, shoot, cool. this is, this is really, really dope. But also, you know, a lot of what was in Korean success was in a student. You know, Void. Void became yeah. the player that he is today. You know, went from went from that kid in Hawaii with a dream to moving into SoCal, being part of 2GG, then growing into CLG. Sorry, my camera went a little bit on focus here, but like <laughs> growing, growing into CLG. Too high, too high. Yeah. <laughs> growing into CLG and then being the player that he is now. And then me seeing your success – and the way that you do things, when did you, when did you find the motivating drive to continue coaching? But also, when did you find that you were feeling successful in your case? Okay, that's a trick question because I. Okay, sorry, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, and I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. no, no I'll, I'll answer regardless because, but I'll just specify a little bit. So, um, and this is once again like disclaimer, disclaimer. No offense to anyone who is in a less fortunate situation than me, but I still don't feel like I am successful. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of just getting started. Um, so like I said, I, I, had, I had confidence in my coaching from the get-go. Um, I actually started like three months ago um, and I just made my Twitter account. I had everything prepared. I, I prepped for like a month um, mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of work at it. Like, like I mentioned before, uh, I actually have a job. So I work a nine to five and I do this on the side. Hmm. Um, what's your what's your job if you don't mind me asking? I'm I'm a game developer. Oh, right, right. oh okay. makes sense, right? Makes it, it, sense. Can so. you can you say what company or you're like a um, NDA? So so it's like a I'm not under NDA. I currently working for Infinity Labs, which is a smaller company in the hmm. Netherlands. We make uh, VR trainings for uh, big oil and airplane companies. Oh, for, like, flying. Nice. Right. So so we gamify trainings, which is pretty interesting. But I mean, like I mentioned before, I think there's there's certain parts of it in which I can really grow and I really um, feel very blessed with a job like that. And certain parts where I'm just like, I kind of have to, I don't want to say compensate, but I got to fill up the blanks with like the the passion for esports, right? Um, but yeah, so so I work like like my hours for my job, my nine to five, and then when I get home, I work in Ramses esports. So I'm back to the sixty hour week anyway. Like <laughs> I cannot escape it. I cannot escape. Um, but um, there was the whole lockdown situation. And during the lockdown situation, I suddenly got a lot more free time. Didn't have to travel to work, back home. Um, in general, just feeling a lot more relaxed when you're working from home, right? So with that extra energy, I decided to set up Rances Esports, uh, knowing I have confidence in my skills. And trying to see, you know, like I mentioned before, is there interest in this type of coaching? This coaching that is more conceptual, that is aimed at giving you new perspective, new concepts to work with. Rather than the type of coaching that's like, oh, you should do this instead of this, right? Which I feel a lot of the public coaching right now is. Which is does not go for everyone. Does not go for everyone. But um, it's definitely a pattern, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, I, I, just, I just decided to take the dive. And I, I just wanted to see, you know, how far can I push this? Um, it's very hard to be a full-time coach, um, in my opinion. Especially since, I think, Zeke 
um, who who is lovely, by the way. I I dig his content for sure. Um, has the market on lock to to a large degree, right? Zeke Sports. I don't know if you're familiar with. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So he does a lot of public coaching, coaching for you know uh, anyone who wants to sign up. Um, plus, he's you know he's 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 just been very established. So, so when I came into into the coaching, I figured I need to have something that differentiates myself. So I know I can go more in depth than basically almost any coach on the market right now, right? I want to say any coach. I don't want to sound too conceited. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm up there in terms of like depth, right? Because I know, like, if you look at other coaches, and this is no offense at all to other coaches or commentators, is that they could be good analytically, but they don't have the practical applied experience that I have. Because my coaching is not just theory. It's it's all been proven because I, I've i been a top player in Smash 4. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I hit top 20 in Europe. Um, I got and, wins on on Ixes, on mm -hmm. I studying on S one. And know, if I can, and if I can, just for a quick second, I think that's why. Just to, just to add to that, I think, granted, the climate has changed. I apologize. I know I'm saying his name is like saying Lord Voldemort at nowadays, <laughs> but I, I just want to go ahead and say disclaimer. Also, when you look at Zero, a lot of his successes was because Mewtwo King was his coach, and he was yeah. he was. You think about it. He was one of the greatest in Melee, the greatest in Brawl. And, you know, he had his own discrepancies with 4 and Ultimate. But, like, you know that he could... He, he still got PGR in 4, despite yeah. him not, you know, like, where he stood. And he's been a top player, you know? But 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 go on. Let me, let me, let's, I want to go back. I just want to get that example there. But, yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. I think I think there's a value to, to you know, theory that's also applied. Um, and... On top of that, it goes more in depth than the average coaching. So that's like two bonuses that I feel like I have, right? But I feel like that type of um, quality is very hard to see on the outside. When you when you when you see Ramses esports on Twitter, you don't know how in depth I go when I coach people. When you read my tips, which you know, admittedly, I I think they're pretty well explained, but they're not as in depth as a a tailored uh, coaching session, right? Which I um, which I like because that allowed me to. I just want to add to that really quick. That allowed me to want to check out your streams because I was like, okay, this is really good. I love it. I'm pretty sure he has a lot to talk about in his streams. And then yeah. I went on to go on to that. Yeah. So that's where my ADD comes through. I always have something to talk about. <laughs> so, um, hang on. Where were we? Ooh, right. We're so I, I I had to find a way to differentiate myself. And that is where the content creation comes in. So I don't just coach people. I post my tips on Twitter. I post two tips a week. Um, I try to post YouTube videos as well. There's been a little bit of a drought lately, but I'm getting back into it in like a big way. Um, and my, my videos range from surface level fun, where I do like a tier list, to super in-depth, where I talk about like the core concepts behind competitive play. Um, extremely in depth, or just you know, surface level fun, where it's just like analysis, haha. Rob Downer's broken. Um, that, that's not that's not funny. It's not, it's not funny how broken Rob Downer is. It's pretty but... broken. I'm just laughing because it, it, I'm. I just tell people, dude, like it's. I hate Rob. That I just tell people when you look at the character. Me and this is a conversation I have with a friend. When you look at Rob's character design, I hate Rob. Be pre I think it was pre patch. Like he had like maybe pre patch can't really remember right now, but he has like one a decent jabbing tool with down tilt, and then yeah. he controls the neutral with gyro, and then like he just like disintegrates you with down air. He can kill you at whatever <laughs> percent he wants to, and he's a zoner, and he has a solid boxing game. Are you kidding me? Like this, this character. Character has it all. Yeah. Yeah. This it's, character. He's, he's strong. He's strong. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm laughing. Go on. Go on. But yeah, so that's how I decided to differentiate myself, right? Do some content creation on the side. And I think that's, that's, it's, it's cool as well because it lets me express some of the things that don't really come through in coaching. So uh, what I've been doing recently is I've been doing webinars. So these are live webinars where I um, basically you can sign up on my website, ramses-esports.com um, for only like 10 euros. And then you can join my webinar on my Discord. So at, at a certain date and time, I hold my webinar for one hour in which I talk about one specific topic, super in depth. So um, the previous one was how to make a game plan. 
So I try to explain the steps on how you construct a cohesive game plan that actually plays to your character strengths and how you build layers that not just let you win individual interactions, but also like on the strategic level. Um, so that was like one hour with some questions at the end. And then the next one is going to be on how to read your opponents and what to do with a read. Which and, and these topics, like, of course, to some degree, they come up in coaching. Like, I try to explain people, I don't think your game plan is very cohesive. Here are some ways to fix it. But it's never like, you can never catch me spending one hour explaining how to create a game plan. And, you know, of course, if someone asks for coaching and their only question is how to make a game plan, like, without proper preparation, I probably couldn't spend a, a full hour talking about it, right? Um, and then there's YouTube videos as well. So these type of uh, extra content allows me to inform the masses, so to say, even more, right? So it's not just if you want my knowledge, you can get my coaching. It's if you want my knowledge, watch my YouTube videos, read my tips, watch my coaching streams, sign up for my webinar if you want to go super in depth, right? Um, so I basically what I try to do is I try to make it accessible because my core goal is to inform people, not to make money. I have my job, right? I just want to inform people. Um, and, you know, the dream, of course, is that there's enough interest that I can make it my job. But that's for the future. Right now, we're three months in. Um, I'm just trying to build. But, uh, but yeah, it's, that's basically been my, my approach is I'm not just a coach. I'm a coach and a content creator. I think, and to dial back a little bit, just what I said earlier, I see that as successful in its own way. And I say it that way. I said it that way because it is... Also, once again, I probably gonna have to say like a hey, disclaimer every other you know every other time because <laughs> we don't we don't want to offend anybody and I don't want to offend anyone. We, you know, I I love all I love all coaches. I love all content creators. You know, I talked about it a lot probably by now. But when I say successful, it is successful and is that it is something fresh and something amazing and great. And Aww. I say fresh and not to criticize any other co any other coach. Not at all, please. Told, I, I had his all. I love his content. I, I enjoy it. I, I'm just literally like three months ago, I just started getting into your content. Cool. And it's fresh because no coach that I know of, and I, I'm, I'm sorry if I don't follow Zeke, you know, forgive me. I, I know him. I know of him. You know, I, I've, I've, I've seen some of his, I've seen some of his work, but he doesn't do a webinar. You know, some, some coaches, they don't do webinars. And to me, the way a webinar the, that I've seen, uh, I haven't seen any of them yet because I haven't had the time, you know, I've been recording all these episodes, but is it's such a great thing to tune into because it's you're giving people. Well, actually, let's go into to tell me what's the structure of how you, you know, before I, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but really cool. quick, for, all, for all you guys wondering what it, what is uh, how much is 10 euros to American dollars? It's 11 dollars. And I think like 78 77 cents so in case yeah. you guys are wondering oh what's the conversion of euros for any of you, <laughs> for any of you for sure. i'm sorry it changes i'm not part of the u.s department of treasury i can't tell you what's going to be the euro rate <laughs> you're not tomorrow. wait wait <laughs> <laughs> i only know because i check stocks once in a while but okay okay all right, all right. To yeah, into, um, let's go yeah let's go into that your, your webinars so the webinars um i there's not a lot to say honestly so they're live webinars so mm -hmm. you tune in you you join my discord which right now is like 300 members strong um and you basically by signing up as soon as i wake up and i check my mail i'll give you a role which allows you to join an exclusive voice channel and then at the def the defined date and time i think the upcoming webinar is uh the final sunday of the month so that should be sunday 30th at 7 p.m europe time so my, it's all in my time zones whenever i talk about times yeah um so 7 p.m uh and it's going to be for one hour and only people who are in the like the the voice channel can follow along so i share a presentation a powerpoint presentation that i prepare um and then i basically start teaching for well not the full hour because i leave some time to ask questions uh but i would say like 15 minutes and then um in the final 10 minutes anyone can ask questions and then i kind of try to answer those uh last time we went hella over time because there were a lot of questions which is fine it was a very broad topic it's going to be a broad topic again i i will stay as long as i need to to answer any questions um and then the webinars lost forever 
<laughs> so if you that's, if you yeah yeah if you're interested then then that's 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 when that's when you gotta join is uh at the moment itself and then but uh yeah i i basically started them like i mentioned before as a way to kind of delve deeper into individual topics that are universally applicable so coaching is kind of like a balance between um generic concepts like you mentioned you listened into the coaching session and you feel like you learned a lot right because a lot of what i talk about is strategy it's not isabel's forward air is bad here you should do an empty landing and then you know it's well when you do a landing aerial then you try to you know your opponent's going to have to deal with it in this way and then you know how do you play to that what do you do in terms of like a strategy level um but at the end of the day it is tailored specifically to one person right because that person is not applying the strategy or that person's game plan is uh, lacking in these ways, right? So everyone has their unique flaws. Um, so with these webinars, I basically try to explain one concept in like my whole theory. I take one concept and I explain it as in-depth as possible. Like legitimately, I believe if you follow a webinar, you will never have questions about that topic again. I will explain it well enough for you that you will legitimately have like a high level player knowledge of that topic. Um, and then through that, you know, I, I have both specific advice because anyone can get out of it what they are lacking, uh, as well as generic advice because it's applicable to anyone, right? When, and to finally bring it out full circle about the webinar thing, that's what I feel is so fresh. I mean, I did, I did, you know, you have your own website as well. I think it's RamseysEsports.com. Yeah. And when I got to see all that and I read all the information in the page, I was like, let me, let me dive this right properly. Okay. In fighting games, there is no established academia. There isn't. There isn't like you go to school and then Daigo shows up <laughs> and he's your teacher and he's going to show you how to do a perfect a Daigo parry. That, that, that does not happen. <laughs> as much as, as cool as that sounds and as dope as that would be, that does not happen. I would pay for that. <laughs> I, to I totally would. <laughs> but, you know, he may, he may do that on a stream, you know, talk about the Daigo Parrier, but he does not, he's not a paid teacher. He's not. There is no established academia in fighting games, period. What developers have tried to do as of late is try to teach you the game before you play the game, and the manner of teaching you is through their story mode. I a big shout out to Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, which is the game I got yeah. into. Its story mode is dedicated to teaching you the basics of a fighting game, parrying, your block string, how to combo the the game's systems that are in development, the zoning, things like that, you know, um, using your DP, invincibility frames. And even then, if you don't understand, the game has a glossary of fighting game terminology, which you can learn from and read if you need to take the extra time to know what an Okizame is that kind of stuff that is what game development has done nowadays when it comes to smash unfortunately you know a lot of people have had their discrepancies about the training room and they don't like it right because there's a lot of things there's mod packs shout outs to jugia for making that by the way ah. what you're essentially doing and i've and i and i that's what the one thing i think i've enjoyed about you and Iza is you guys are taking us to school in the school that we care about in this in this case which is smash I want to learn Smash. I want to play Smash. There is no established uh, academia, but lo and behold, here are these two great guys t teaching me who who have, like you said, this webinar is like a class session that I will that, yeah. I, that I obviously would care about because I want to be better at the game, right? He is willing to spend. Like a lot of people, you know, the American school system is what it is, but you are willing to spend a one on one time with a student. Right, or multiple students from what I saw from your stream and teach them about, you know, this is what you should do. This is what's going wrong, right? Going into that. And that in itself, the academia, the academics of someone who is, edu you know, educated. And I'm not, I'm not talking, like I said, it's clear we're not talking anyone down or anything, but someone who is educated is so valuable yeah. to anybody wanting to learn the game, to anybody yeah, I mean wanting to improve. I certainly have unique credentials, right? Um, oh, not just within the co coaching team, but within like the, the Smash community as a whole. Um, and, you know, I, I think the, the good thing about academics is that, and, you know, people will disagree with me here, but I believe that anyone who wants to make it can. 
You know, it might not be for you. It might I be agree. harder for you. I agree. It might be harder for you. It might not be fun for you. But if you want it, then you can. Because that's that's basically how it's set up. It's, it's set up to be a logical system. And if you commit the time to understanding the system, then, you know, you you understand it, basically. Um, and that's also why, like, I believe anyone can be a high-level player. I think anyone can be a top-level player. You know, minus uh, learning deficits, physical deficits. Like, that is, unfortunately... Um, that could impede your progress significantly. But for like the average denominator, um, I think anyone can be a top level player. Uh, if you just have someone who can teach you the correct way to get there. I, and this, this is a little bit weird because people are like, why are you using this example? But this is an example because I love this movie. This movie holds a special place in my heart because it's coincidentally been with me through that this movie always happens to show up at the most interesting times of my life. Okay. But Ratatouille is a movie that I l love so very much. I love that movie a lot. Okay. <laughs> Did not ex I expected something like Bruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> but it has this really important message that I took to heart and I took to myself. In the movie, if you haven't seen Ratatouille, go watch it on Disney Plus, whatever. Go on. But in the movie, there's Remy the rat, you know, and he is limited by the fact that he's a rat. And he looks up to his idol, Chef Gusteau. But the phrase that Chef Gusteau always tells him is that anyone can cook. And Remy believes that he can cook and he can cook. He goes to show and the movie goes on. But that's the one thing that I love about that movie is that it tells you that anyone can cook. You can be this great chef this master chef, you know, it's, and of course, like you said, there are limits, right? You, there might be some things holding you back, like, oh, you know, maybe physicality, you know, things like that, right? And for Remy, it's the fact that he's a rat, <laughs> but <laughs> it is very true. Anybody can be this top level player if you apply their time. At the time of this recording, I, yeah, I believe, I believe, you know, if his, epi his episode should be coming up because I have everybody's recording schedules and episodes right, yeah, differently yeah. land up, and I apologize for that. I probably apologize for one too many times, but and spoilers if you guys are wondering who's the next person I have Charlie on the show Charlie Charlie the King was a kid that he was the the antithesis of the kid who I'm gonna be the greatest player it's gonna be me I'm gonna be number one blah blah blah, blah <laughs> right and he goes on the Facebook group and he talks about it blah, blah, blah. and then he did it that's the difference is that he did it he believed that he could be a top player number one and he accomplishes goals he set himself that way and it's very much like you could say anybody can be a top player and you have to do the things you have to start asking yourself what can i do what are the steps what are the the goals the things i need to look into to become that player some people end up doing it some people give up some people don't i tell people sometimes what i'm trying to do for myself is do things because they're hard because if it's easy i don't do it and i'm sorry if it <laughs> rephrase that I trying to tell myself to do things that are hard because it's challenging because most of the times yeah. I've walked away from something hard, but let's go back into it because it's hard, because it's a challenging and I get to grow from that. Such as yeah. being scrubby and bad. Right? <laughs> but, but yeah, like it's, it's, you know what, what it is, is that a lot of people play like a lot of, I, I always hang on. Okay. So I always talk to my students about setting goals for yourself and, you know, playing to your goals. So some people play Smash because it's fun. If you play Smash because it's fun, then you're not going to accept a hard challenge because hard challenges are for the fulfillment in your life, right? You feel fulfilled after completing a hard challenge. You have fun after completing, you know, an easy or a hard challenge depending on the subject matter. But a hard challenge is not fun. A hard challenge is fulfilling. Um, so if you're not... If, you, if, if Smash is not that source of fulfillment in your life, and maybe there's no reason for you to accept a hard challenge. And that's fine. Like, we all play for our own reason. I actually think talking about like improvement as a whole, and it's gonna, this might sound like super pretentious, but I like, uh, I like to equate the player's journey of, or like a lot of players' journeys uh, to Buddha. So I don't know if you know the story about Buddha. Um, Very little, he, the, 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 just the base level of like, he was the son of like a, the great, a great emperor. And, yeah, yeah, so yeah. so basically he had all the material wealth in the world mm -hmm. and and he felt stuck. So there was nothing nothing in life 
that was left. So the only thing you could do was sacrifice all of that and go on a spiritual journey, right? To to raise yourself to a new level. And Buddha, he so he he started out as as basically the lowest of low. He had no possessions. And at the end of his journey, he is above even the gods, right? So that is like the human potential. And I think there's actually a lot of similarities with like the Smash journey because a lot of players, so they start off playing the game, they don't have a coach, and they just learn their character. So they they gain all this character knowledge, very specific knowledge that, you know, they could get some wins. Maybe they play based on their punish game because this is optimal for my character, right? And eventually they raise a they reach a point where there's no more character knowledge to be gained. They've gained all the material wealth possible. And at that point, you need to restart your journey and focus on the perspectives, on the way you see the game, on the different approaches to the game. Rather than that one, I'm going to focus on being the best wolf in the world, and I have the sickest wolf combos in the world. I can two-frame every Squirtle consistently because I practice it 10 hours in training mode every day. <laughs> like, of course, that makes you a better player, mm. but, but there's a limit to where, where that's going to take you. And then when you start that, that, that journey on like a more conceptual level, which is very similar, like I, I was raised very spiritually, so yeah, forgive yeah, me if this sounds no, like... No, it's okay, it's okay. Um, if you start that journey on like a conceptual level, that's like very similar to a spiritual journey. Because it's very in, in, introspective. Gaining knowledge with your character, that's, that's external. Because you're not your character. And that knowledge on your character that exists outside of you. You're taking things from the outside and you're, you're, you're taking it. But when you're building on your perspective and your, your, your concepts, that is, that is inner growth. Like in, in a way, I don't want to say spiritual growth, but it is spiritual growth. It's a very yeah, similar yeah. process. Um, and like that is the ultimate path, and that is how you, with the lowest of lows, can reach that that level above the the people who were born with it. You know, the gods. That is how you know that that's. I, I firmly believe that anyone can make that journey. Yeah, and I, and I agree. I think that was such a great analogy for it. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. And I think that's yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of my it's kind of my job to think about this stuff. Huh? <laughs> 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 but you know what we think when we look at it, like yeah, that's oh god. I think we should even end the show on that. Honestly, I don't, I don't even know what else to speak about anymore. Yeah, can we go any higher? Yeah. <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> but I think oh god. I'm sorry. That was actually really good. Um. <laughs> But when I look, yeah, I think that's something that, and I tell people, and I'm going, I'm not, not, not I tell people, but I'm going to tell you all that that is even something that I have seen in some of the players here in SoCal, and you'd be surprised who has reached that plateau, and they're like, Vance, I just feel like there's nothing I can do but to learn from myself, and there's no other, there's no other player, I, I'm, I don't want to expose him because I don't want to like, and I apologize right now if, if I'm overexposing him, because uh, I, I do. I do think I think he's talked about it with people, and I just want to say a disclaimer. I, if, I, if I did it, I'm sorry, but I think he's the best example because you know we, we've hung out, we've talked a lot. Nico was mm -hmm. one of those players who had that issue, being right. one of the best Shulk mains out there. The only person he had to look to was Kome, and at times he would outperform Kome, you know, and he did reach those plateaus. And then eventually he yeah. started to you know. Uh, fortunately for him, you know, he started to look within himself and you know start asking himself these questions, but. There are, fortunately for him, he went that path, right? But unfortunately, there's a lot of players who never get to go to that path. They never see it that way. And here you are, you know. If you, I hope you guys are, I hope, hope a top X top player or X person, you know, gets to watch this episode and gets to see, like, oh, okay, I now see the value of coaching. I now see the value of this explanation. I now see the value of this. You know, I yeah. Think and I mean, if 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 you don't like quick self plug, you can. Uh, look up my my YouTube. It's Ramses underscore esports, or if you just search Ramses esports, you just find it. Uh, or on my website, if you go to Ramses esports.com, mm -hmm. there's an about me section, and it has a video on what I think the benefits of coaching are. Um, it's like ten minutes, but it's um, well, it's it's pretty philosophical if you enjoy that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just it's a TLDR of my or well, not the TLDR. I think it's the in depth version. Of my of what I'm trying to tell today, yeah. Yeah. Uh, God, I had a, I had a thought process here, but I 
kind of. I'm sorry, I interrupted. I interrupted no, 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 no. Not about you, man. It's about me. I want, I want to tell your story, and I think you've told it so well that I just love it. Thank you, thank you. Um, God, there was something here. Hmm. Trying to think here. When I, I, I literally look, I wrote all my questions down and how my talking points, and now that I've finished them, there was something that wasn't on my talking points that I wanted to say. And now uh. it's like great. That's why I don't remember it. Oh man, I'm so sad it escapes me. Maybe we can get. Oh God. Okay, well, well, what was it about? Do you know the topic? It came coaching. Fresh... Yes, thank you. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I'm, coaching, I'm coaching my interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it's good you are. That's how good you are. But um, <laughs> but yeah, to close off, right? I, yeah. We should we should definitely we should close off with the whole analogy of Buddha and everything. But I just want to close off. I, w- I want to close off with this. And this is why I see it's important. And is dial it back. Alright, cool. Is you look at the professional esports scene. Something that Smash is you know, trying to do has done really I mean, I think when I look at an example of what Smash can be at an esports level, I just tell people watch the Dreamhack tournaments in Europe. They're they're a great example of what they can be. You know, done so well done so officially with really the great care of the community and understanding you know the community level so definitely that's the that's the right i hope the u.s gets to be one day but when you look at esports you look at overwatch csgo league i've never played league i'm sorry but all these professional esports games the one thing that they always have and i tell people you have to look at this they always have a coach because they're it the team needs a leader a guide and the coach is there to provide that. And Smash, you know, being, being try, I guess trying to, I, I, I don't know if I'm the right person to, to ask this or to, to say or whatever, and I apologize. But Smash, in being esports, needs these coaches. This is why I think people like you need to exist. There is a need for coaching. Just as there is a need for a community, there is a need for coaching. And if professional esports has taught us anything is they are just as valuable as any commentator and maybe even more valuable than any commentator because lo and behold ramses is a great example korean is a great example they can also yeah. make excellent casters and with that if there's anything do you is there anything you want to say Ramses, before we close the show here and go into going to post show yeah i mean i can do plugs or we can do that in the post show you, you tell me uh, the, 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 I don't know if this, uh, do I have a community? And I, once again, I apologize. I wish season two may be live season one, all pre-recorded stuff. If you guys want to have season two live, please let me know. I have ideas for make to make season two live, uh, over Twitch. And, but for now, really quick, you know, end of story. The reason why season one is pre-recorded is the previous podcasts. Nobody's fault, fault of my own. I failed. And I said I could never get past episode five with each podcast. Bust the world. Ramses is part of episode six, breaking six, the barrier, yes. breaking the barrier of episode five, <laughs> and going into episode six. So it feels great. I feel like I've reached an important milestone here. But I apologize for all you guys who want the show live. If you guys want the show live, I promise you, I'm gonna work on ways to have season two live. So I don't have so you guys so the community can ask questions. And I want to make sure you guys' questions get you know get to be asked uh, properly and rightfully. So, I have no community questions, but I guess the only one I can ask you as part of like an, in- an interesting question is: uh, Do you have any hobbies that help you? Aside from like for me, I I love playing video games. I love being in those intense moments in Valorant or in Smash. But sometimes I do need a break from video games. I need a break from my home. And my I tell people one of the hobbies that I actually do that a lot of people know may or may not know. You guys can probably see it from all the Vans shoes I have, but I actually enjoy skating. I do. I Okay. Yeah, I enjoy it. It's a great way to de-stress myself, just think about nothing but the road, and either trying to land a trick. Uh, I, lo- I love bombing hills on a cruiser board, so I enjoy that very much. It's a great way for me to relax. Are there any hobbies that you do to de-stress yourself in any other way aside from this? Man, games? it's so weird to talk about this because, like, so my personality is very, like, 100 or 0. So what I basically do is I spend weeks just dedicating all my time to what I'm doing. <clears throat> so it's like nine to five and I work, I get home, 
I pump out content for Francis Esports. I edit my videos. I write my tips. Um, and that's just the end of the day. And it feels very fulfilling. But eventually, of course, you need to de-stress. And that is when I go into zero. So then I go to work. I, I'm not as focused as I normally am. I, I get home. I do nothing all day. Uh, I watch anime, watch a movie, you know, maybe play some single player games, stuff like that. Um, so that's, I don't, I don't really have a specific hobby to help me de-stress. Mm -hmm. It's more like, because I have a, I have a very wandering mind. Um, so my, like, unless I'm in, in like a, a, a coaching session or like editing a video when I'm busy doing something, I'm like super focused. But when I, when something is not pulling all of my attention in, then my attention goes anywhere. Um, so in those weeks, I basically let my attention just roam free and I literally do whatever comes to mind. So uh, last time that happened, which I'm now just barely getting out of, um, was Pokemon. So I spent a lot of time just playing VGC, playing 1v1, looking up the Pokemon stats, building teams, doing whatever, and then, you know, even playing some of the games on the Switch again, you know, the uh, Sword of Shield again, trying to do some... Um, you know, to just replay stuff like that. So, no specific hobby, just uh, a very specific pattern that I use to deal with the stress. No, 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 and it's totally okay. Like I said, show is yours. Yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. I think. Uh, I guess. Do you have a favorite anime in this case? Since oh, have... dude, watch watch Chihaya Furu. Have you ever heard of Chihaya Furu? No. You're, you're in... What's his What's his name? Zan. Zan is in your region, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love. Well, Zan. he's he he says he says that like every every other tweet. And okay, so so here's is that no, that's right? not Steinsgate, right? Because I I watched Steinsgate. And I was no, like, this no, is no, no, no. It's called Chihai Fu. It's like a, it's an anime about competition. Sh shocker. Uh, <laughs> um, funny thing about that is that I watched that anime when it came out, and I made it. I I I told everyone to watch it, to the point where like I think Nick Riddle. I don't know if you know Nick Riddle. He started. Uh, uh, I met him once, but we were like, it was like a like right. a brief passing by. Go on. Fair enough. So he got really into it as well, and he had a bigger audience. So he would start spamming, "Watch Chihaya for you." And then how do I spell that? Um, so it's Chihaya. So C H I. Oh, it's very cruel to make an English like Sorry, language sorry. speaker I'm just trying spell. trying to figure out what it is. C H I H A Y A F U R U. Why, why, Chihaya? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Because I'm, I'm curious. Talking about spelling, like I was on uh, a Dreamhack, Dreamhack Winter last year, and I actually, I wanted to spell out fire, and I misspelled it on air, and it, it was like the most embarrassing moment of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, and that was F E E. -R no, no, I forgot the, the R. <laughs> It was, it was so stupid. Uh, but at least, at least, as someone who doesn't speak English natively, I get to excuse. You know, I, I get a free excuse for that type of situation. Mm -hmm. The one that I did love is uh, Haikyu. I like that one a lot. Oh yeah, Haikyu Haiku is great. Uh, Haikyu is great. Yeah, Zan, Zan Zan is like the the CEO of Steins Gate hype. Like, oh eh. God, I'm not on board. Um, <laughs> you don't I like didn't it. Buy it. I didn't buy train tickets. Now I gave it like an eight out of ten, which is still good, but yeah, I don't think it's like a ten out of ten or anything close to it. To me, ten out of ten is Code Geass. That's that's, but that my I tell people my bias is I'm a huge Mecha fan. I love Mechas. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I I can respect Code Geass. I think it's a good pick. Yeah, I'm a huge Mechas. I also love the the super meta commentary on like racism, fear of Westernization, yeah. and all that stuff. I think it's super great. Uh, but I will tell people if it's not your favorite, it's no big deal. But it's just my favorite. Uh, well, I guess we could talk about Mother and Poor Show. Guys, this has been the main show. Uh, one final time, Ramses. Definitely uh, give out your... Where can people find you? Right. So I'm mainly on Twitter, where you can find me uh, at Ramses underscore esports. I post tips twice a week, as well as whenever I go live on streams. If you do enjoy uh, the content, you can always check me out on Twitch as well, which is uh, uh, Ramses underscore esports as well. If you enjoy my tips or any of my other content, like my videos, which do get posted, on my Twitter as well. Uh, feel free to give a subscription. It really helps me out a lot. I'm trying to trying to go full time with Ramses Esports, so the more support, the better. Uh, if you really enjoy the conversation, you can always join in on Discord. The link to which is in my pinned tweet on Twitter. Um, 
but yeah, I, I have a channel in which you can ask for advice, where a lot of my students can give you advice. They think in similar ways as I do after, you know, a coaching session or two. But I personally spend a lot of time in my Discord as well, where I try to answer basically any questions that uh, are left unanswered. So yeah, definitely check out the Twitter, the Twitch, and the Discord. Well, guys, that's all we have for today. If you guys are part of whatever thing I decided to do with the post show, definitely check that out. Um, until next time, it has been my pleasure to serve you. Ramses, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was an Thanks honor. for having me. Yeah, it was an honor having you here. <laughs> and until next time, guys, it is, like I said, it's been my pleasure to serve you. Stay safe, wear your mask, and be kind to one another. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.